now that we've gotten really comfortable at working with the normal distribution and finding probabilities, we're ready to actually get into working with samples. Now, the heart of statistics is collecting a sample to make an estimate or a conclusion about a population. So first, we need to know how do we find probabilities with sample means. The big difference here is in the previous chapter, in chapter 2, we were finding the probability for one individual value. Now we're going to take several values, find the mean, and look at the probability of the mean of several values. And this is what gives rise to what is called the central limit theorem. And the central limit theorem basically in words says that the mean of a sample should be close to the mean of a population. And not only that, it should have a smaller standard deviation. The idea is that if we have several values averaged together, the extreme values are going to be averaged out and pulled back in towards the center, which makes the standard deviation smaller. In fact, we can go one step further and say that the larger the sample, the closer to the mean we become, and the smaller the standard deviation is. And that makes sense. If I interview nearly everybody, I will be probably pretty close to the actual mean. I'm not going to be off by much, which is why the standard deviation is going to be so small. And as we're working with samples, this idea of the standard deviation, or the smaller standard deviation, we call the standard error. The standard error will use the symbol of either sigma sub x bar, or you'll often see s sub e for standard error. And that's the standard deviation of the sample means. And the way we calculate the standard error, or the standard deviation of the sample means, is we will take the standard deviation of the entire population, and we'll divide by the square root of the sample size. Or if it's a sample, we'll say s for the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And that's a key equation that we're going to use quite a bit today. Using this new standard error, we can replace the standard deviation in our distribution of the mean. When we're talking about means, we're going to say that means are normally distributed with the same mean as the whole population. But then we will use the standard error, or s divided by the square root of n, to represent our new standard deviation. Then we can go forward and calculate z-scores and also 
probabilities in much the same way we did before. Now the z-score is equal to the mean of our sample minus the overall mean divided by the standard error. And that's going to be the key new thing that the central limit theorem gives us is that new standard error as we calculate our z-values because we have a sample, not just one value. So let's look at an example where a sample is done. A cell phone company finds that those who go over their data limit go over by an average of 2.2 gigabytes with a standard deviation of 0 0.4 gigabytes. You conduct a survey of 80 customers. First thing we want to know is we want to know what's the probability the average overage is above 2.3 gigabytes. Or what's the probability that x is greater than 2.3? Actually, x bar is greater than 2.3, that the average is more than 2.3. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do here is we're going to figure out what is the distribution of the mean. The mean should have the same mean as the population, 2.2 gigabytes. But the standard deviation is smaller. We take the 0.4 gigabytes, and we have to divide by the square root of the sample size, divide by the square root of 80. So we have 2.2 comma 0.4 divided by the square root of 80 is about 0 0.045. That 0 0.045, that is our new standard error. So when we calculate our z-score, we remember that z is x bar minus mu divided by the standard error. Our x bar, we want to be greater than 2.3. So we'll take 2.3. We'll subtract the average of the population divided by our standard error, because we have a sample, not an individual, of 0 0.045. And when we divide, we get 2.22. So if we think about our normal distribution, the mean of the population is at 2.2. We These are x values. We want to be at 2.3 or bigger. So we standardized into z values. And the z value actually turned out to be 2.22. So that's what we're going to look at in our standard normal table. In our standard normal table, we've got 2.2 and another 2. So we see the probability there is 0. 0.4868. But remember, that is always the area 
between the z value and the mean. We want the area in the tail. So the probability that the mean is greater than 2.3, we know the entire right side is 0.5. Subtract off the middle of 0.4868, and we get 0.0132. There's about a 1 and a third percent probability that if I interview 80 customers, I'll get a mean bigger than 2.3. And that's the idea of the central limit theorem. We're shrinking the standard deviation by dividing it by the square root of the sample size. Whenever we have a sample, we need to divide by the square root of the sample size. Let's keep with this example one more. I also want to see if we can find Q1 or the 25th percentile. So same problem with the cell phones, where we've got these x values. The mean x value is 2.2 gigs. We want to find the x value where 25% or 0.25 is in that first tail. Well, the table is going to give us the other half, because the table always goes between our percentile or our z value and the mean. So the table is going to be 0.5 minus a quarter, or 0.5 minus 0.25, which is also 0.25. So we're going to look up the z that corresponds with an area of 0.25. Notice we're talking about an area. We do not know the z value. So when we go to the table, we want, we're looking for an area of 0.25. We're looking inside the body of the table. And 0.25 happens somewhere in the middle here between 0.67 and 0.68. So we're going to call that 0.675. The z value is 0.675. But notice it's to the left of 0 to the left of the mean. So it actually has to be a negative 0.675, because it's to the left of 0. It's smaller than 0. We still need to convert that z value, which has no context, into a x value that does have context. And very similar to how we did it back with the normal distribution, our x bar is going to be equal to the mean plus the z value times the standard deviation, which in this case is the standard error. So x bar is equal to our mean of 2.2 minus a 0.675, because it's negative, times the standard error, which we calculated the standard error to be 0.045. Point zero four five and two point two minus point six seven five times point zero four five gives us a mean of two point one seven putting units on it gigabytes. The twenty fifth percentile of means of sample of size eighty is going to be 2.17 gigabytes. Now it's time for you to take a look at the homework assignment to try and do some problems using the central limit theorem, where we have this new standard error. The new standard error is triggered because we have a sample, not just one individual data value. See if you can work with a few. And in class, we will discuss them further and practice this whole central limit theorem a little bit 
more.